Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on, YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So um, I've been seeing things on Twitter. I think this was a, a fake rumor, actually. Uh, Jordan Renan on one of his podcasts said that a lot of scouts were interested in Kyle Pitts uh, in this draft as a top 10 kind of pick. They really like what he can bring to the table as a tight end, as a receiver, as probably the best tight end prospect we've ever seen. I mean, when you really look at prospects, we haven't seen anyone like Kyle Pitts. The dude is 6'6", and he runs routes like a 6'2 wide receiver. He, he's the number one target on his offense. He's the number one guy on his offense. And I'll get to the Evan Ingram stuff in a second because just because someone plays the same position doesn't mean they're the same player. But Kyle Pitts is a route running tight end. He is an explosive tight end. He can get down the field. He's great after the catch. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's great in the jump ball situations, of course. And, you know, even for someone who's 6'6", six, six, he has a, an incredible catch radius. And I'm going to actually have a film session coming out about him tomorrow. But just as a preview to, to, to talk about how great I think this, this pick would be if he were to fall to the Giants. Now, I started off kind of in the, the, the Cal Pitts amazement train probably about two, three months ago, maybe two, three months ago. And I was on the Cal Pitts train. I listened to some people. They kind of stomped out the flames. And I said, okay, maybe we, maybe this dude is just a tight end. We need someone to help him get open. But when I look at this dude's tape, man, Kyle Pitts is a number one receiver. Now, a number one receiver can be on the outside. It can be on the left side. It can be on the right side. It can be in the slot. You can have a number one receiver anywhere on your team. You can have a number one receiver coming from that tight end position. Alvin Kamara, when Michael Thomas is out, Alvin Kamara is the Saints' number one receiver. Without Alvin Kamara, the Saints would not be the same team at all. So you all have to understand that Kyle Pitts is a weapon. This NFL right now is about weapons. It's not about conventional wide receivers. It's not about conventional tight ends because Kyle Pitts really doesn't fall into either category 100%. I mean, Kyle Pitts is, is probably someone who would have run a 4-5. Uh, he, his agility drills would have been great. And just to watch how he can move at 6-6 six, six is, is amazing. And then when you look at his blocking, he's not the best blocker. He's not the best blocker, but at the same time, he's a willing blocker. And that's pretty much what you need in the NFL. You need someone who's going to know their assignments, and you need someone who's going to be a willing blocker. And Kyle Pitts always has his head down, right in the person's chest, trying to make sure that he can create movement, trying to make sure that he can create lanes for runners to run past them. And he has open holes, as you'll see in the film session I do tomorrow. He has open holes for all of these runners and, you know, block at times for the quarterback so he's not the worst blocker in the world is he a good blocker i wouldn't say at all he, he needs to get stronger he needs to you know get better technique as far as blocking goes but kyle pitts is is a, a you know he'll be a a below average blocker but someone who can potentially get you over a thousand yards from his position if you have a dominant tight end that opens up the offense for everything because you have to worry about a monster in the middle of the field Imagine how much better Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard and, you know, the, the receiver that we take in the, in the you know, first, second, third round. It wouldn't be first because Pitts would have been first. But whatever receiver we take after that to complement him or whatever receiver we bring in free agency, it's going to make that much more easy for them to be able to get open in their own routes because they're going to have to constantly worry about it's third down. Where is this tight end? It's in the red zone. Where is this tight end? So you're going to see people like Sterling Shepard getting single coverage. People like Darius Slayton getting single coverage in the, in the red zone. And then you're going to see Kyle Pitts get double covered, triple covered, and still come down with the football in the red zone. The Giants need to score points. They need to score points. They need to move the ball. They need more yards. They need more production. It does not matter where that production comes from. They just need more of it. So I don't care if that's because Saquon has 25 touchdowns this year. 
I don't care if it's because we draft Kyle Pitts or Pat Frymuth in the second round, and they have, you know, 12, 13, 14 touchdowns, which both of them are really capable of doing. We need to help our offense in the worst way. Sure, we can take an offensive lineman. I'm all for that, but we need weapons at the end of the day. And if we do not walk out of this draft with a, a an elite weapon, when we have one on the board at 11, and I'm okay with Rashad Bateman too, if we do not take a weapon right there at 11 and we don't get any elite weapons this offseason, that is a scar on Dave Gettleman's resume. It just is because we need to leave this draft. We need to leave this offseason with <laughs> some weapons. That, that was the biggest issue. People could not get open. And you want to tell me that you're going to, to not address the, the biggest need, which is someone who can get open? And then people say Evan Ingram. This is, this, is what I'm, this is where I'm going to get into the Evan Ingram part of this whole discussion. People said Evan Ingram was a receiving tight end in college. Evan Ingram was supposed to be the best thing. First off, Evan Ingram wasn't even the best tight end in his class. O.J. Howard was supposed to be that all-purpose beast tight end. And he was someone who could block. He was someone who could block, someone who you know was supposed to be a freak athlete. David Njoku was supposed to be a freak athlete. Evan Ingram, all he had working for him was speed. He had a serious drops issue, which Kyle Pitts did not have. Kyle Pitts had zero drops this past year. Zero drops as number one offense. The offense ran through him. He had zero drops. The offense ran through Evan Ingram last year, and he, he dropped a lot of passes, 11. And he had the, the, the most impactful drops out of anybody this entire season. He lost us the most points that anybody in the entire league did. So we're going to just you know draft an offensive lineman or draft some defender and just pretend that Evan Ingram isn't going to do the same thing. The rumors are, you know, first off, I'm going to I'm going to start this off by saying this. Rumors are rumors and I don't know where these rumors come from, so don't go running with these rumors thinking that these are all facts, but rumors were saying that if the Giants were to take uh Kyle Pitts, that Evan Ingram would be on the trading block, which is fine because we replace Kyle Pitts with Evan Ingram. We use Evan Ingram to trade up to take, uh, an, whether that be another weapon, a corner, if uh, Thomason walks, a defensive tackle in the second or third round, we can use Evan Ingram to, to package and trade up in this draft. So Kyle Pitts can solve a lot of issues at once. It can be addition by subtraction by getting Evan Ingram out of here. It can be addition by subtraction by giving Evan Ingram less targets and having him being, you know, going from the first option to the, the third or fourth option because we take a receiver uh, you know, we sign a receiver and take Pitts. It'll take all the pressure off of him. He'll get less snaps. He can be used as as that kind of, you know, reverse tight end and use his just pure speed. But as far as running routes, catching passes, being a red zone target, which I feel like every tight end needs to be, you need to be a big body red zone target. And the Giants don't have anyone like that. We don't have anyone like that. I would love to take Jalen Waddle, and for, for the record, I'd take Jalen Waddle over Kyle Pitts at 11. But Jalen Waddle in the red zone might be a red zone threat, but he's not the same kind of guy that you can just throw the ball up to, and you know more often than not, he's going to come down with it. So Kyle Pitts should be someone that the Giants should consider. He is an elite prospect. He's an elite weapon. And that's the number one need for the Giants, a weapon. So you guys let me know what you think of Kyle Pitts. I know a lot of people, this went through one ear and out of the other. They don't value the tight end position. That's fine. But I think we all agree that we need weapons badly. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell and listen. I make all kinds of content for NFL teams, so if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know, and have a good one.